Mr. President and other officers, I now declare you duly installed. I'll close by uh, saying may you have a rewarding experience in your leadership of the Illinois Retired Teachers Association. I want to uh, turn the meeting over right now to our next president, Mr. John Flaherty. and this is to start. I notice we have almost 10 minutes to go, so, okay, I won't take 10 minutes. First thing I, I, I have to say is thank you to all of you, not for this, but for all that you do, because IRTA is nothing without involved members. How many new people is this your first convention? Just wondering. Stand up. I think that's amazing. That's a lot. Give them a hand. It, it gets better. I mean, some conventions are, are great, some we argue, some we fight, but we all come to agreement because this isn't an organization run top down. The members make the decisions. And I've already had requests for some of you, just so you'll know, we're going to look in the next convention. They wanted armrests on the chairs so that when they fall asleep when we're talking, they don't completely go off. We're going to do our best to do it. Uh, one of the things, so we, we need rules, and we're going to have a rule for most of our speakers from now on that our unit has, and our unit has one rule for all speakers, that they stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, but sit down to be appreciated, and we're going <laughs> to try and go with that. And over the next two years, I hope at all of our meetings, we also have some fun, because we're we're so worried about all of our problems that we also always have to have some fun in our lives, and that's something that, that we need to do. And, and the last thing I have to say is something that our unit honoree, Phil Dennis, uh, gave to all of our unit. And he said when he first got in the unit that one of the leaders, I think the president, looked at him and said, he challenges every member to at least just do one thing. And if all of us would do one thing for the IRTA, we would have the most involved membership of any organization ever. Please, thank you. Feed that down to your units, if you would. If we could get Everyone there. Obviously, we can't get everybody involved because the massive 8.3 cents a day it costs to belong on dues deduct, we can't get some people to do. But the one thing we're going to do is we, th that I continue to do is all of those people who still won't join that are retired teachers, I keep reminding them of the minuscule cost for the massive benefits. and and. Many of you, when we had our legal defense fund, and thank goodness that Judge Carmeyer wrote that decision because he wrote it so well. And if you listen to the debate when he asked three questions of Lisa Madigan's lawyer and for the other side, leading her into a trap and ended up with one that just left her dumbfounded, which was, if we agree to everything you said, that this is an emergency and it's a police type thing you need, we need to do it so we don't go bankrupt. And we agree to let you cut pensions. What would stop you from coming back in a couple years and wanting to cut them again because you continue to underfund them? And she had absolutely no answer. So I, I remind people, I, I don't, I don't want to come back to you and say we need 50 bucks, we need 100 bucks, we need a couple hundred, but we need money for our legal defense. I want you to join as members, and I want you to contribute to the PAC if you can. I realize that a dollar a month is another three cents a day. We'll wait on that till we can get them to pay the eight cents a day, but try to get them to put it in. And I will continue to tell those people who won't join us that the benefits we get 
are because of things that other people did for us, and we need to continue to do them, not just for ourselves, but for all the others. So thank you to everybody who's a member. And I thank you, John. Oh, he has one more comment. Can I say one other thing? <laughs> I, I almost forgot something. I got a nice email today, which I, I use when people complain about all the money that goes to our pensions and schools. And this person said he talked to a homeless man this morning and asked how he ended, ended up that way. And the guy said, up until last week, I had it all. I had plenty to eat. My clothes were washed and pressed. I had a roof over my head. I had cable TV, the internet, and I got to go to the gym and the library every day. I'm working on my MBA on the internet. I had no bills, no debt, and I even had full medical coverage. And as I felt sorry for the man, I asked him what happened. Was it drugs, alcohol, or divorce? The guy said, no, I got paroled last week. <laughs> and I, and while we laugh, I also use that type of thing when I talk to people who wonder why we should put cooling units in, air, in schools because they didn't have it when they were young. But we have it in every jail and prison. Why we should pay for things that benefit society when we pay for things to keep other people. I just had to share that. Thank you. And thank you, John. John, I will inform you that uh, this uh, turnover is like a relay race. You can't wait till January 1st. I will still be running up through December 31st. And there's that period of time that starts today. And the baton, you're in full steam going at January 1st. And I'll warn you, I'm probably slowing down already and two and a half months left, uh, but I have totally enjoyed this. So John, we will pass that baton on January midnight there and we will send out a video. Showing that. So beware, there's your, there's your thing to be watching by coming up.